call on the name of God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus, and you join me in prayer. Almighty God, we ask for your spirit to be upon us, to move through us, to stir up the waters as you did in creation. Lord, may your spirit help us to hear this day the word that is for us. We ask this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, so some of you know, especially if you were here last week, I wasn't here last week. We had uh, Reverend Dr. Richard Carter, who was here last week. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate it. Uh, I was on vacation. And uh, I was on vacation 20 feet away over at the house. It was a, a lovely staycation. And I was getting to this point in, in just kind of my days where everything, I was tired. I was getting crabbier and crabbier and crabbier. I know you're like, no, I can't believe this. Uh, it's completely impossible. Uh, but I was. It was just, for some reason, there, there, was, there was no peace that was going on in me. You ever had that? You're sitting there, you're, you're restless within your heart, and you're just, uh, yeah, it's not, it's all like, you know what? The solution is going to be vacation. I will rest. The only problem is I really didn't rest at all. I wasn't really restful in any way, shape, or form. I slept a lot. I ate a lot. I did all of the things that you should do in order to, to kind of gain rest. Played. Nothing. Nothing. Rest is elusive. The human heart is restless. Perhaps you've experienced that. Doesn't matter how much you even try to just force the rest in. It sometimes just doesn't work. And I bring all that up because I'm looking at the text for Hebrews. I'm looking at the text for Hebrews and it says these priests are there in the temple. And one thing that's important to know about the temple is there are no chairs in the temple. There's no place to, I mean, you can sit down on the ground, I guess. But, but there was no place to sit down. There's no place to recline. There's no place to just kind of sit and chill and, and relax. And so it says in Hebrews that these priests are standing there day after day after day offering these sacrifices that just don't avail for anything. They don't do anything. They, they bring these offerings for sin and they're just not accomplishing anything. And perhaps if you can't identify with restlessness, you can identify with futility. Trying again and again and again and again and again and again and offering this day after day after day. And it's just not getting anywhere. So these priests, these priests in the temple, they don't rest. They don't rest. They offer their sacrifices. They don't rest. And then the writer of Hebrews does something really, I think, interesting. He compares these priests who have offered their sacrifices again and again to this one who offered a sacrifice, who offered his own body, who offered his life for humanity. And he does this once, and then he does something that is really, I think, significant. He sits down. He shouldn't be. But he sits down. He waits. Oh, it's nice to sit down. Sometimes after church on Sundays, my knees hurt so bad. Oh, so much wandering around and moving and kneeling. Uh, that's all just whatever. It's nice to rest. It's nice. This one sits down. Because what he did accomplished for you and for me everything. His life given for us did everything for us. It has given us eternal life. It has given us uh, an opportunity to enter into his rest. To be part of, of him as he sits there and waits. Uh, the image that, that the, he also uses in Hebrews, uh, until his enemies are made as a footstool. This is uh, kind of an old tradition, uh, old tradition, an old custom where, where you have the defeated king 
come before you and you put them up there and you rest your feet on them. Anybody want to come be my king? Our nature is inclined to restlessness. You've experienced it, I've experienced it. We've had it in jobs where we're just like, yeah, it's time to move on or this isn't working. Uh, we've had it in relationships. We've had it in schools. Uh, I was talking with Ana yesterday about restlessness when there's a, a test coming uh, and maybe you should have studied more. Um, restlessness. I was thinking back to college in, in particular, once they moved from, from quarters to semesters, it was crazy the restlessness that I had by, the, by week 11. <laughs> and it was just like, Are, aren't we done yet? <laughs> Why do you keep talking? Stop it. We have restlessness. We have restlessness this week. It's, it's Thanksgiving, this Wednesday, this Wednesday. <sighs> and the day after, we celebrate our thankfulness, we go and purchase more. Right? We don't even know the way to the day after. The restlessness is creeping up. It's 8 p.m. at Walmart. Restlessness. Restlessness. The Amish have a, a tradition called rum spring. And one of the, not all Amish, but some Amish have this. One of the things that the Amish community did was to try to incorporate within their their, their life together, how do you deal with restlessness? And so people, typically adolescence is, is when this is happening, they, they go and they have some restlessness. It doesn't need to be particularly wild, there's just some sort of a rest. Sometimes they dress like, like normal people, right? And, and like that's the rebellion, that's it. But there's this restlessness. And, and so one of the things their communities do, we need to kind of honor that there is this restlessness. We need to acknowledge that it exists. There is restlessness in us. So there is restlessness. The question I have is, what is, what is rest? Because one of the things I'm doing on vacation, one of the things that I, I come back to work this week, and I'm like, I don't feel rested at all. And I'm faced with this Hebrews text where it's just talking about this guy sits down after he does what needs to be done. And I've come up with that, that question, what is rest? And the obvious answer is, it isn't doing everything. Rest isn't doing everything. Oftentimes in life, you can feel like the weight of everything is sitting upon you. Yes? There's so many demands upon your life. There are. And that's, it can get to be a lot. So, so rest, obviously, isn't doing everything. Because you know, even as the demands come, there are more, and more, and more. That's not particularly restful. But rest also isn't doing nothing. I try really, really hard to do nothing. I have accomplished skills in doing nothing. Like, no, oh, you, you do the thing. I'll watch. Rest isn't also doing nothing. Sometimes I think we want the, the Calgon to take me away. Uh, I don't know where I got that in my head from, other than the commercial in the 80s. Uh, sometimes I'm still stuck in the 80s. Don't mind me. Calgon. They still have that commercial? I haven't seen it. They should. It was relaxing. It isn't, it isn't doing nothing. It isn't. One of the things that, that I actually found out, kind of sitting here this week, was that really I was just depressed. I was depressed. And I was just kind of massively depressed. Things, <coughs> situations weren't going well, right, and, and just a whole bunch of things were kind of conspiring in my own, my own self was kind of conspiring against me to shut down. To try to find some sort of fake rest by doing nothing. Rest 
is placing my care, my burden, on Jesus. I think a lot of you intellectually get this. You know, you've heard perhaps in the Christian church, that we can place our burdens upon Jesus. And so you know this, you hear this, you have this, it sits up here, and yet you still walk around with this restlessness. And so one of the things I wanted to do today was just a little bit of practice on what it is to actually release something. So I want you to go ahead, in your pew somewhere, there's something that you can pick up. It can be a hymnal, a pen, or your bulletin, something. You got something in front of you somewhere? Anybody? A couple of you have things in front of you. Excellent. Pencils. All sorts of things. Now I want you to do just this one crazy thing. Go ahead. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that releasing? Wonderful? It is absolutely wonderful. Because this is what it means. This is what it means to place your care and your burden upon Jesus. You say that I can't carry it. I cannot hold on to this. And I just got to drop it. I just got to let it go. And we are so unpracticed in this. That sometimes we just got to do it again and again and again until we get the idea. Why don't you go ahead and just close your eyes for a minute. No sleeping. <laughs> Close your eyes. Breathe in. And then release. In. And release. You can open your eyes. There's all sorts of ways in which you begin to physically reinforce the idea that what God has for you is release. Breath is one of them, taking something and just dropping it and saying, it is this easy to learn. Lord, reinforcing me that the thing that I have been carrying, that, that has so much weight, it's in your care. Pick up my book. The world is so far away. means for us is that God is not interested in our perfection before we enter the rest he has won for us. God is not interested in how well we have solved anything <laughs> before we enter into the rest that he has won for us, that he himself is sitting down at the right hand of God the Father, waiting, waiting, the day that his enemies are made his footstool, and he says, Come and enter into this rest because this is what I have done for you. It's not waiting for our perfection. Uh, looking at this Psalm 23, Psalm 23, many of you are familiar with Psalm 23. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, etc., etc., etc. Right? Everybody see the geek and I? Alright. Etc., etc. Ah, uh, sorry, that was my joke for the day, and that failed. Miserably, but that's why. Uh, you get to one of the verses, and it says in one of the verses that, that you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I consider that verse to be one of the most profound verses of the Bible, especially when it talks about rest. Because it is not in the absence of my enemies, but in the presence of my enemies, that God says to me, you eat first, I will take care of it because I have taken care of it. Come into my rest, recline, relax, eat, be joyful, have peace because I am your God and in the presence of your enemies they will not touch you while you celebrate here in this rest. The thing, whatever it is, may still be there. But you don't have to carry it anymore. This week is Thanksgiving. And I think some of my impression was the holidays you're having. 
Anybody have that happen to me? Um, I have to see family. And, and not even like all sorts of family, but just one particular person. Um, and it's just, it's really hard. It's really, really hard. But I'm going to go do it. I'm going to go do it. I wasn't going to do it up until yesterday. And I decided to listen to myself. <laughs> just not for once. Oh my god, that makes sense. What you're saying there, pal. Um, it's the peace. The peace and the joy of Jesus. I get to stop postponing it until someday where things are perfect. I get to stop postponing it uh, until I, I've got it all worked out, I've got all my contingencies and all my plans and everything ready. I can stop postponing the peace and the joy of Jesus because Jesus has already won and he has entered the rest and he has invited me to be a part. All right, amen. The attitude of rest is that Jesus is in charge. And not just intellectually, but totally and completely, fully for me. That even as he rests, he is capable of work. This is one of the things that happens again and again and again and again on the Sabbath. It's this day of rest, but Jesus is at work. It's a day of rest, but, but Jesus is healing the sick. It's a day of, uh, of rest, uh, and Jesus is making the lame walk. Even at rest, our God is at work, so that we may rest, and we may have peace and joy. Today, this Thanksgiving, as you head off to your random places, uh, as you have people show up from random places, as you, you have all sorts of uh, stressors and other things, the peace and the joy of Jesus be with you as you enter his rest. Amen. Mighty God, we thank you. We thank you for your grace, the grace that was poured out for us, the grace that was offered in your sacrifice of life for us, so that you may bring rest. Lord, may that rest bring unto us peace and joy as well. And we may be thankful people. And we may be people who, in the, in the middle of circumstances, in the middle of difficulties, we may find ways to praise. We ask this, Jesus.